Hi there, this is Nuclear Physics Lesson 1, and this is the history of the atom. Primarily a recap of the history of the atom from GCC. So first of all, J.J. Thompson had the plum pudding model. And Thompson postulated there was a diffuse, weaker, positive charge spread throughout the atom. In this instance, depicted by the, the orange type colour. And that the electrons were simply dispersed throughout the atom, just like the plums in a pudding as denoted in the diagram. If you have to pause or make any notes, please remember to pause the video. So let's move on. So three prominent scientists that worked on this, Rutherford, Marsden and Geiger. So experimental setup, so what did we actually see? What did they do? So it looks very simple. On the, the blue box is the alpha emitter. And inside this setup here, inside the circle, is an evacuated chamber. So an evacuated chamber simply means there's no air. So why would we need, why would we need no air? Well, primarily the alpha particles, which are fired out from the source. If there was if there was air in the chamber, then the alpha particles are so massive they would interact with the air and wouldn't actually hit, hit the target. The target is this this gold looking band, this yellow band, and this is literally gold leaf. And the gold leaf, the gold leaf was used primarily because at the time in the early 1900s when this was done, gold leaf was the thinnest possible material. Uh, by some accounts, the, the thickness of the gold leaf was approximately seven atoms thick. So that was the material that the alpha particles would bombard. And then this is like a, this thing on the right is like a traveling microscope. And that's used to see the interactions on the outside of the chamber of the alpha particles. Also, the box that the alpha particles, are, the alpha, you know, particles are emitted from, is a lead-lined box, and that is so that the beam is sent out perpendicular to the to the gold leaf in a perfectly straight line, or as close to a perfectly straight line as is possible. So let's have a look at what scientists thought would happen if the plum pudding model was, was genuine. So what was expected? It was expected with the plum pudding model that the atoms would simply pass straight through. Now we could get some slight deflections. Some slight deflections would have been you know, would have been warranted, maybe very slight, such as this. And if this happened, the plum pudding model would have been realised and would have had strong evidence to suggest that it was indeed true. However, something else actually happened. So when the radioactive source of the alpha particles were fired at the gold foil, most of the alpha particles actually did pass straight through the gold foil. They were at the top here, the non-deflected particles, onto the fluorescent screen. However, we got some particles that were deflecting at quite large angles in this region, this region, which wouldn't have been possible under the plum pudding model. And some of the alpha particles were actually deflected at incredibly large angles and deflected back towards the radioactive source. So the Thompson model on the left, as you can see, the alpha particles just passed straight through on the this diagram and on this diagram. And then on the subsequent diagrams on the right, the Rutherford model, shows a different interpretation and the observed results coincide with what we looked at on the left hand side. 
So most of the odd particles passing straight through the gold foil. Uh, with some with some slight deflection. And then some more severe deflection in this region. And some very much so severe deflection heading back towards the direction in which the out particles were initially fired. So let's look at what this means. Rutherford had a famous comment regarding the deflection of the out particles. Rutherford said, quoted, it was quite the most incredible event that has ever occurred to me in my life. It was almost as incredible as if you fired a 15 inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and hit you. So in, in terms of energy, the, the alpha particles have got an immense amount of energy going towards the gold foil and then returning back in the direction in which they originally traveled is in terms of energy as Rutherford has described here. So quite significant. And it also clearly disproved the plum pudding model regarding the, the atom. So what needed to happen was the theory needed to change to adapt uh, the evidence that was presented due to the experimentation. So, what does it mean? So on this slide, some important information. So the observation on the left-hand side. The vast majority of the alpha particles pass straight through with absolutely no deviation, or some with some slight deviation. So the conclusion is that the majority of the atom is empty space, and it's been long established that you know an atom is you know ninety nine point nine percent of an atom is empty space. So the second observation: a small proportion of the alpha particles were repelled. So that simply means that the nucleus must have contained positive charge. It was known that the alpha particles and our particles, obviously, two protons and two neutrons were positively charged. Therefore, the conclusion was that the nucleus must be the same for the electrostatic repulsion to occur. And the last point, approximately 1 in 8,000 our particles were deflected by more than 90 degrees, which is called backscattering. And the conclusion was that the nucleus must be very small in volume. And as I've already said, 99.9% .9 of the mass must be in the nucleus. As net, with 99.9% .9 of the atom is empty space, you know, the vast majority of that mass must be in the nucleus, since fast moving alpha particles have relatively high momentum. Remember, if you want to make some notes, please just pause and then we'll move on. So, here are some questions. If you want to pause and do the questions, and then I'll take through some answers momentarily. So let's have a look at some answers. So first of all, why was the alpha source in a lead box? Pretty straightforward. To protect the users and ensure that the beam was projected directly at the gold foil. Why was the experiment done in a vacuum? Well, alpha radiation is relatively large. Uh, alpha radiation is approximately 8,000 times larger than a beta particle, which is just a fast-moving electron. And alpha, as, as known from GCC, interacts with air very strongly. Only has a few, uh, a few centimeter range in air. So having a vacuum is incredibly important when using alpha radiation. So thin gold foil. Finished material available at the time, reportedly approximately seven atoms in thickness. So why did we count so many results? You know, uh, by all accounts, it was up to 3 million flashes on the fluorescent screen. And that's simply to reduce random error or human error. Remember in an exam, please don't, don't write, even though if it's true, do not write human error. Please call it random error. And, and it's to ensure that statistical evidence was indeed strong. So the more results, the stronger the evidence, you know, the, the more weight the experiment would hold. So number 2A, what observations support the conclusion that the nuclear radius is much smaller than the atomic radius? And that's simply that most alpha particles pass straight through the gold leaf without scattering. Or with some slight deviation. Part B, most of the mass of an atom is uh, most of the mass of an atom of gold is in the nucleus. 
The small proportion of the alpha particles are scattered at large angles, therefore the scattering nucleus must have a large mass. And coincidentally, you know, the, the nucleus will hold approximately 99.9% .9 the mass of the atom. Why was the Rutherford model, uh, model accepted as correct? Supported by an extensive number of results with strong statistical evidence. As mentioned earlier, 3 million results is, you know, is an impressive number, especially at the time. What force is responsible for Rutherford scattering? Should be straightforward, the electrostatic force. Number five, what would have happened if neutrons had been used instead of half particles? Well, there would have been no scattering. Uh, no repulsive effects due to a neutron having zero charge compared to the half particles, you know, charge of plus two, or relative charge of plus two, or 3.2 times sensor than a minus 19 coulombs. Maybe some neutrons would have been absorbed if they had sufficient kinetic energy. And the last one. What would have happened if aluminium foil had been used instead of gold? We would actually get smaller deflections as aluminium has less protons therefore less charge. Therefore, the electrostatic force would have been less when compared to the, to the gold leaf. Anyway, I hope that helped. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Mainly recap of GCSE. But thanks for watching anyway, and I'll speak to you at the next one. Thank you.